So one of my favorite TV shows of all time is The West Wing. I have seen every episode of The West Wing at least a dozen times. I've had so many marathons of the series. Hey, maybe maybe I'm even due for another marathon of The West Wing. And who knows if I'll see The West Wing differently now than before I left the Democratic Party. I have no idea. But I bring up the West Wing because if you watch the earlier seasons, season two and season three, I believe, and maybe even into season four, but definitely season two and three are basically almost all about how the president of the United States, a Democrat, of course, was elected with multiple sclerosis, never diagnosed his condition or never disclosed, rather, his condition to the American people, ran for president, won the presidency, had multiple sclerosis the entire time. And then I don't remember if he got caught or if he decided to disclose it. Something happened where a lot of people were starting to find out that he had MS and he was forced to disclose it before the second election. And because it's a TV show, he won re-election, even though he had multiple sclerosis, which became a problem later on in the series. Now, of course, The West Wing is a fictional account, but I bring this up because this morning, well, last night for some of you, but this morning for me, I woke up to the news that the president and the first lady have been diagnosed with coronavirus and everyone seems to be freaking out about this. Everyone is freaking out as though this is the end of the world. I even saw someone say like, this is the biggest national security threat in history and we don't even know if Trump is going to be on the ballot in November. Everyone needs to calm down. You do. You need to calm down. And listen, in this video, I don't particularly want to talk much about the diagnosis itself. I don't want to talk much about what the media is reporting or what it means for the left or what it means for the right or what it means for anything, because everyone needs to calm down. And here's what I think. People get sick. People get sick. It's part of life. And on the scale of sickness, coronavirus is actually not really the most serious thing that could have happened. I mean, listen, Trump is an older dude. There are many other ailments that Trump could have been diagnosed with that are far more worrisome than COVID. And I'm not suggesting that COVID is fake, and I'm not suggesting that it's not serious for some people. But the reality is this, that even though Trump is of the age where he is at, mo at more risk of, you know, dying from it, he's really not, the, the risk is not that high. And Trump is going to have the very, very best medical care in the world. And I have absolutely no worries that he is going to come through this with flying colors and Melania as well. And that's what I tweeted today. I tweeted out, they're going to have the very best medical care in the world. And it actually might be good for Trump to have a break. I also think the way the media and the left is going to play this is going to send the election right into his hands. But most importantly is this. And this is really what I want to talk about. I t ended my tweet with, everything happens for a reason. Never doubt it. Listen, Joshua and I on our regular Tuesday show, Nothing Remotely Controversial, we actually talked quite a bit um, at the beginning of the pandemic about how this is, this is a singular event that is impacting the entire world and how rare something like that is and how when something like that happens, I believe, and I'm going to be... Listen, you guys are going to we're going to get a little woo woo in this video because I'm I'm a very spiritual person and my spiritual beliefs play into how I view certain events and especially big events like this. You know, when you have an event like the, the pandemic that literally affects everyone, I believe that that's happening for a reason. Now, we can always choose to see the negative in things or we can always choose to see the positive in things. The negatives of the pandemic are, of course, the economies got shut down. Uh, people got sick. People died. I mean, uh, businesses were closed. There are so many negatives, so many negatives that I'm not even going to go into. But some of the positives that happened is that some people who really needed a break, they got a break. They got a little vacation. And oftentimes when we're running ourselves ragged, sometimes the very best thing we can do is to get sick. You know, um, a couple years ago, this was before I got my book deal um, for my first book, Zen Your Work, which is about mindfulness at work. Some of you know I wrote a, I wrote a book, some of you don't. Um, I had been hemming and hawing about wanting to write a book forever. And I had been dragging my feet on writing the proposal. And I had ideas, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then I spoke at South by Southwest, I, I don't even remember what year it was, whether it was 2017, 2018, something like that. I spoke at South by Southwest and 
after my presentation, all these people came up to me and said, Carlin, you need to write a book. Here's my card. You need to write a book. Here's my card. And I had no idea what to do with this because I had just been kind of, you know, banging out a, a half-assed book proposal in my spare time, but I hadn't really focused on it at all. And all of a sudden I had all these publishers that wanted to publish my book and I didn't even have an agent and I had to kind of figure that all out. But what happened is I was leaving that hotel uh, and, and, and going to the airport that morning to go home and I tripped on the sidewalk out of nowhere and broke my ankle. And <laughs> I mean, really, it was like, I wasn't even drunk. I wasn't hungover, nothing. I just, I was up in the morning. I was going to the airport. I was getting in my lift. I tripped on the sidewalk, broke my ankle. Um, I had a boot on for a good two months. I think it was, it was, a, it was a long time I had to wear that stupid boot. And while I had my broken ankle, I had no choice but to sit my butt down and write the dang book proposal. And I ultimately ended up getting my book deal, frankly, as a direct result of not only speaking at South by Southwest, but as a result of breaking my ankle because I no longer had the, the excuse of like, I have all this other stuff to do because I, I really couldn't do much of anything. I mean, I guess I could have walked around with a boot, but it was really painful to walk after about half an hour in that thing. And so I really kind of was, I, I had to kind of stay put and just focus on my writing for a little while and I ended up getting a book deal as a result of it. And I tell you this because, listen, Trump is going to be sitting around. We don't know how long he's going to have this, but the likelihood here is that Trump's going to be sitting around. He's going to be watching Fox News. He's going to be tweeting a lot. But maybe, maybe Trump needed a break. Maybe on just like a deep personal, maybe spiritual level. I don't even know how spiritual Trump is, but that honestly doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe he just needed a break. And maybe this will give him some time to relax and to come back even better than ever. And, you know, I think that that really could be a good thing. I think that Trump, Trump shows a shocking amount of energy for someone his age and in his position. And one of the things I've always been so impressed by with Trump is that he has not aged. Every other president, you see them and like they look like they're about a million years older than when they took office. Trump looks exactly the same. Dude has not aged one single day, but I can't imagine that this year has been the easiest year for him. I think it's very obvious that he hasn't been sitting around. I think he has been working. He's been getting a lot done. He's been dealing with the pandemic. He was dealing with impeachment. He's been running around doing these rallies. Maybe Trump just needed a break. But I'm also not worried about Trump dying as a result of this. I'm not. Trump has too much to live for. And he, like, he even has, like, he has, like, Trump is like a spitfire, man. He's got all this energy and life in him. We saw it in the debate this past week. I don't think Trump is going anywhere. Fundamentally, in my spiritual beliefs, and I understand that my beliefs are not your beliefs, but I really think that people choose when they die, at least on a subconscious level, um, and I think that Trump has got too much to live for on, you know, a spiritual and a human level to have that be his ultimate choice here. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I could be wrong, but this is the very last thing I'm worried about. I think that this is going to be great for Trump. And I think that, you know, when bad things happen, maybe here's where I want to go with this and here I how I kind of want to wrap this whole little rambling video up in a little bow when things happen that we perceive to be bad, sometimes it can be the greatest gift in the world. And that if we have faith and we know that everything, absolutely everything happens for a reason, we might not understand it at the time, but everything happens for a reason. Listen, look at what has already happened in just the past, what, when was it, like 12 hours ago this was announced? So. The media was, went from talking about Trump being a white supremacist again ad nauseum forever, which is what they've been doing for years. And all of a sudden that talk is off the table. All of a sudden the president of the United States is sick and we're going to see people's true colors come out really, really quickly. We're going to see the true colors of the left. We're going to see the true colors of the media. People are wishing him death. And I don't believe that fundamentally most of the American people want to see the president die. They might not like him, but I just fundamentally don't believe that this is going to be a good look. And just like the video I made the other day about the debate and about talking how, about how I thought Trump went too hard, he went too aggressive at Joe Biden, and it made Joe Biden feel more empathetic as a result, guess what? I absolutely think the fact that Trump and Melania 
both have COVID is going to make them be more empathetic as a result. Maybe it's a nice little balancing for the debate that we all had to suffer through (laughs) the other day. So maybe this is rationalization. Maybe it's wishful thinking. I don't know. The reality is in this situation, no one knows what's going to happen. Not a single person knows what is going to happen. And so I think we just got to roll with it, folks. But what I want to, what I really want to say is that, you know, have faith, have faith that there is a bigger plan in store here. Listen, Trump winning in 2016 was a mother flipping miracle. Trump winning in 2016 was a miracle. And we have experienced so many good outcomes as a result of him winning some bad outcomes too. I mean, you could make the argument that the country is much more divided than it was four years ago, but you know, I think we've experienced a lot of good outcomes. I think, you know, we're experiencing peace in the Middle East. Our troops are getting pulled out of Afghanistan. We had an amazing economy before the pandemic and Trump can bring it back. He has banned critical race theory, which was something that was going to come up anyway. And this never would have gotten banned if Hillary was in office. It would have gotten blown up if Hillary was in office. So it was a miracle that Trump got elected in 2016. I think he's going to repeat it. And I have to believe that this diagnosis is only going to be helpful in that regard. You know, they're, they're spiritual from a spiritual belief. There's always this question. There's, there's a question um, of how far will people be pushed before they take back their personal empowerment? And I almost wonder if, if this is this situation that we're living in, and I'm talking beyond the Trump COVID thing at the moment, um, this, this situation we're living in in our society, is this something that we need to go through to fully embrace the power that we as individuals have in this experience again? Is the left trying to push us so far that we very literally need someone as powerful as Trump to pull us back and to remind us that we have just as much control as they do. And we can make whatever reality we want in this, in this world, we can. And I think that people have to be pushed to do that because it's, it's, you know, when you realize that you are in more control of your life and your experience than you think you are, it can be an intimidating thing because that also means you have to take responsibility. And I think that Donald Trump is one of those people that is actively helping people to take responsibility. I really do, man. And I think that that um, people seeing how grotesque I believe the media and the Democrats are going to act in this situation might be enough to push people over the edge. Listen, how many stories have we heard about how the rioting has helped push people out of the Democratic Party, help them reclaim their individualism, because that is directly what the Democrats are fighting for right now. They're fighting against the idea of individual empowerment in favor of a collectivist mindset. And maybe it required rioting and Donald Trump being elected. And yes, even Donald Trump coming down with COVID to show how ridiculous these people are. Maybe this was what was required to get us the result we want in November. So You always have to look on the bright side of things. Always assume that there's a plan for things. Always assume everything is going to work out in its best possible time. And everything happens for a reason. And that's true of this. That's true of anything else. If you can look at a situation and understand that there is a reason to it and there's a purpose for it, that can help you move through even the most challenging crisis. So that's kind of what I think about this whole scenario. That's all I've got for right now. Uh, If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel, turning on notifications, leaving a comment. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. Guys, this is crazy. Like, we are never, we are never going to live through a crazier year than 2020. Like, (laughs) I can't, I would not be, I'm, I'm in DC right now for the walkaway rally. I would not be surprised if aliens landed a UFO in front of the Washington Monument tomorrow where we're all marching out there for the walkaway rally. It just wouldn't even surprise me at all. And hey, man, what a time to be alive.